Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to today's daily quiz session. And before beginning, here's a quick gentle reminder regarding the one-on-one -on -one counseling session that we look forward to provide you. But that's provided. You fill up the Google form that is a part of the description link of this video. So send us your details and allow us to get back to you with this counseling session from our experts with just a few weeks to go now for the exam. Take the big step today. And now let's proceed with today's questions. The first question on your screen is a set of two statements. It says, exercise Vayu Shakti is a trineal exercise aimed at displaying or showcasing the capability of the Indian Air Force to conduct full spectrum operations. Now, when we talk about full spectrum operations, we are talking about operations that can range from the day period, also the night period. And also, one of the aim behind Vayu Shakti is to check, analyze the capacity, participation of helicopters, aircrafts, transport aircraft and unmanned aerial vehicles in India. So this statement is a valid one because that's exactly what exercise Vayu Shakti is. It is a trineal exercise which means it is held once in every three year period. The ultimate aim is to test the capacity of Indian aircrafts and air vehicles to check their interoperability capacity. To check their surveillance capacity, to check how much capability they have to be prepared for a war or a dispute like situation. So the first statement is valid. Now let's look at the second statement. It says joint exercises between Indian Air Force or the Air Force of India and UK are known as Garuda. Now, this statement is not correct because when we talk about exercise Garuda, let's remember these are bilateral Air Force exercises conducted between the Air Force of India and the France or the French Air Force and hence UK here is not correct. The aim behind the exercises is once again to share best of knowledge capacity for aerial vehicles between both the countries to test interoperability as well as to provide sharing of each other's best practices. And hence here, just the first statement is valid, making A your correct answer. The reason why this question has been analyzed today is a release in the Economic Times which talks about Vayu Shakti. It says exercise Vayu Shakti for 2024 is in place almost with 120 Air Force aircrafts ready to show their capacities in Pokhran area. So let's remember that this region is near Indo-Pakistan border, a very strategically important location in Rajasthan state of India. And here, Indian Air Force is ready to provide a full spectrum display of its capacities. So these together will be represented by many, many aerial vehicles of India, including the Rafal, including the SU-30 MKI, the MIG-20, the Mirage 2000, Tejas and many more. And on this note, let's proceed with our second question for the day. Again, a set of two statements talking about sea cucumber conservation. The sea cucumber is one of the endangered vulnerable species. Its population has been on the decline. One reason, of course, is marine toxicity. Changing climate resulting into high level of marine pollution is one reason. Another reason is poaching and hunting because for a lot of nations, sea cucumbers are a part of food delicacy and hence poaching and hunting is very, very common. The reason why we are talking about sea cucumbers is because we have a release from the Economic Times pertaining to environment that says that the central government of India has focused on promoting Lakshadweep tourism. Now, we just spoke about the spate between India and Maldives. The reason was when the Honorable Indian Prime Minister spoke about enhancing Lakshadweep tourism capacity, it was not taken very positively by the Maldivian community. And hence, the rife, the strife was up in the air for everyone to see, spoiling bilateral relationship. But that doesn't mean 
that our government is not now focusing upon promoting the tourism potential of Lakshwadeep. The only thing that the government has said is that let's promote ecotourism. But at the same time, let's also avoid overcrowding because over tourism again is associated with degrading of ecology. And hence the question is about in relationship with India's eco conservation efforts. The first statement says the Dr. K.K. Mohammed Koya, C. Cucumber Conservation Reserve is the first sea cucumber conservation area in the world. Is that a correct statement? Yes, it is, because when we talk about Dr. K.K. Mohammed Koya, Sea Cucumber Conservation Research, let's remember it was created immediately after there was a massive reporting of global smuggling and poaching of the sea cucumber species. Now, these are valuable species in entire of East Asian region and hence the hunting. So, therefore, this was announced as a conservation effort, one of its own kind in the world. The first statement is valid. The second statement says the Piti Bird Sanctuary, located on the Piti Island, is a part of Andaman and Nicobar Archipelago. What is an archipelago? Now, whenever we see a group of islands that are located very close to each other, together they could form the same political entity, but they are broken down into different small, small island areas. This is known as an archipelago, typically a group of scattered island. Indeed, Andaman, Lakshwadeep can be called archipelagos, but there is something wrong with the second statement because the Piti Bird Sanctuary is actually not situated in the Andaman Nicobar. In fact, it is situated in the Lakshwadeep. Okay, and apart from that, let's remember that it is situated on a small island named as Cherry Yapani. Cheriyapani Reef is the place where the Piti Bird Sanctuary is actually situated. It was created back in 2000 and it covers approximately an area of about 239 kilometers square. Now this sanctuary is sometimes also known as Pakshi Piti because Pakshi in Hindi actually stands for bird. Hence the name. It's also referred to as Pakshi Piti. So on that note, we can say the second statement then is not valid. Once again, A will be your valid answer. Now to the third question of the day. The first statement here. GOAL, which is an acronym for going online as leaders, was designed to provide mentorship guidance to tribal youth through digital mode. That's a correct statement because when we talk about GOAL, GOAL was one such initiative that was actually taken to encourage about 2,500 industry experts, leaders in entrepreneurship, leaders in industry, who have hands down knowledge about digital information, communication, technology oriented skills. And now the government persuaded these people to come and volunteer by giving hands down direct training to about 5,000 young tribal members or young tribal inhabitants. The reason was these people will in turn go and provide digital knowledge to the remaining tribal community. Hence, sometimes the goal mission was also known as mission to create mentorship or mentoring through mentorship. Few people will be selected. They in turn will go and provide education in digital knowledge, technology, education to the remaining part of the community and hence the name goal. So therefore, the first statement is valid here. Second statement says it was a joint initiative of the Facebook and the Ministry of Tribal Affairs. Correct. Meta, known as Facebook, was the agency which actually joined hands with the Ministry of Tribal Affairs to conduct this training. In fact, there were many more agencies which were involved in the entire program. So therefore, both the statements here are valid, making C your correct answer. The reason why this question was highlighted today is because of a PIB news regarding social justice which says how the Adi Mohatsav, Adi Tribals, Mohatsav event, exhibition. So how Adi Mohatsav, the National Tribal Festival has recently now concluded and it saw a record-breaking participation. 
of more than 1000 artists and entrepreneurs. Now, this Adi Mohatsav is basically a platform where people from different tribes of India can actually come and showcase. They can show, display their talent in artisanship, in culinary, culinary skills, in herbal medications, any kind of manufacturing. And this is then presented to the larger community. Not only does it generate income, but it also is a great platform for giving popularity to tribal culture and tribal lifestyle. And on that note, the fourth question is right here. It says, which crop gets infected by the Panama wilt disease? Options are A, pineapple, B, maize, C, coconut, or is it D, bananas? So here the correct answer is banana because world over, Panama wilt disease that starts creating crusted brown borders into leaves of banana trees and hence it does not allow the plant to grow and fructify or create fruits. This is also sometimes referred to as the cancer of banana. Why the name became prominent? Because long back it was in South America where the disease had got spread and it took a massive toll on the most popular, the Michel variety of bananas. Today it is one of the most scary banana diseases which actually creates a massive loss to farmers when it comes to banana production. So let's remember this disease is caused by a fungus. The name of the fungus technically is known as Fusarium oxysporus because it spreads through spores. Not only does it impact major banana species, but also the most commonly grown species known as the Cavendish bananas. Talks are still going on among the agro-scientists and microbiologists, farmers, for creating one such genetically modified variety, which is somehow resistant to the Panama disease. This could, this could protect the farmers from loss. This could also mean a lot of saving when it comes to agriculture loss. Now, India being one of the largest banana producing countries in the world, this could mean wonders. So, hence, this fungal disease does impact typically the banana, D being your right answer. It was picked up today because of a news in the PIB pertaining to economy which says that there has been a massive boost to export of bananas from India to Russia via the sea route. Now India already is one of the major exporters of banana. This will only help in further capacity potential expansion for Indian banana exports. So now let's quickly analyze today's PYQ coming to you from 2022. Quite a recent one. Question says, among the following crops, which one is the most important anthropogenic source of both methane and nitrous oxide? Now both these gases are typically gases which are associated with huge climate change, with huge greenhouse gas emissions. And hence, which of the below given crops is associated with the maximum carbon emission or maximum climate degradation? When we use the word anthropogenic, remember anthro is in context with humans. Pogenic, caused by humans. So anthropogenic causes are those which are directly happening as a result of human intervention. It's a very important word when you talk about climate change and biodiversity. And here the options are A, cotton, B, rice, C, sugarcane and D, wheat. And the correct answer is B, rice. You might be aware that rice cultivations needs a lot of water. Typically, there are wetlands that are created around rice in which the paddy actually grows. Now, because the water is stagnant for a very long period of time, rice production is typically associated with a lot of methane, CH4. That is produced as a terminal step, as a last step due to anaerobic respiration or anaerobic breakdown. Breakdown of what? Breakdown of organic matter that is present in the rice wetland. Now people say, in fact reports confirm that globally 8% of total methane pollution happens because of rice cultivation. Hence, B is your valid answer. And now quickly to the fact of the day. The fact of the day, as the illustration shows you, talks about a unique breakthrough in the sphere of space exploration. So we are talking about 
Lignosat. What is Lignosat? A satellite that is environmentally friendly. So it is an initiative that's taken by the US and Japan by creating world's first wooden satellite. It's called Lignosat because it is made up of a particular kind of wood, magnolia wood. It has been tested and proven to not only withstand the pressure of space travel, but also it will not create any environmental disaster. Why is this initiative so important today? The initiative is important because all these years, as all the countries across the world, even private organizations, they are having a race to launch their own satellites for different reasons. The biggest problem that's happening is that traditional conventional satellites are leaving behind aluminium residues. When these aluminium residues are left behind in the space, they can cause massive contamination of the atmosphere and therefore they also degrade the delicate ozone layer. The purpose behind Lignosat is to create something new. Now, when the satellites will be made up of wood, they will already burn before they are able to re-enter. So therefore, they will not leave behind any residues. No trace will be left behind because being wood, it is combustible. It will completely burn during re-entry itself, which means that not only will it pave way for further more carbon neutral space explorations, it can also tackle the problem, the menace of tiny aluminium particles which are today floating in the upper atmosphere, causing massive devastation to environment. And hence the interesting fact of the day, with this today, I take your leave for the session. I hope you enjoyed it. See you soon with another such exciting session. Thank you.